has done amazing things for the believer. Right. In the past, in the present, and he's going to do amazing things for us in the future. Exactly. Yeah. And what is one aspect of, of the salvation that he's going to bring to us in the future? Well, one aspect is called glorification, which is also called future sanctification. And that's when we're going to gain glorified bodies. We'll never sin anymore. We're going to be living righteously forever. We're going to have bodies that are perfect, so they will not decay. They will not age. There will be no pain. There will be no suffering. There will be unending joy forever. And so that's part of the uh, salvation that we have is going to open up into a fuller experience of the life of Christ. And I think Paul talks about this a little bit in uh, Colossians. He does. And this, we're going to go to Colossians chapter 1, verses 21 and 23. And here's what he says. And you, speaking to the Colossians, who once were alienated, alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now he has reconciled in the body of his flesh through death, to present you holy and blameless and above reproach in his sight. If indeed you continue in the faith, grounded and steadfast, and are not moved away from the hope of the gospel which you heard, which was preached to every creature under heaven, of which I, Paul, became a minister. Now here's the, here's the problem. Right. Paul says he's going to present us uh, uh, holy and blameless and above reproach in his sight, but that seems to be conditional. If we continue in the faith, grounded and steadfast. Right. Does that mean if you don't continue in the faith, you lose your salvation? No, but what it does mean is if we don't continue in the faith, we won't receive what Paul talks about here. We won't be presented as holy and blameless and above reproach in his sight. I don't understand. So what's the alternative? Okay, well, uh, the word present... Um, is uh, a term that relates to the judgment seat of Christ. At the judgment seat of Christ, every believer will be presented by Jesus before the Father, Mm. right? Jesus says, he who confesses me before men, him will I confess before my Father who is in heaven. Right. So before the Father, he will say, this this one has been faithful. Mm. He has lived and confess me to the end of his life, and this one is going to rule and reign with me. However, he who denies me, him will I deny him before my Father who is in heaven. Mm. So the believer who doesn't persevere in confessing Christ to the end is going to be denied the privilege of ruling with Christ, and instead of saying to the Father, this one is worthy to rule and reign, he's going to say... This one will not rule and reign because he has not been a faithful servant. Mm. He will get into the kingdom, but the question here is how they're presented. Yeah. In fact, notice the three words, holy, blameless, above reproach in his sight. Mm-hmm. Well, the word holy means set apart, and that's a requirement, for example, of being an elder. An elder must be set apart. An elder must be blameless. That's a requirement of an elder, right. and an elder must be above reproach. Well, nobody thinks that an elder is sinless. We're not presented as sinless. We're presented as set apart, blameless, and above reproach in his sight Mm. in terms of what we did in this life. Obviously, in terms of our position, from the moment of the new birth on, we're wholly blameless and beyond reproach. See, I was going to ask about that because some people would say, doesn't God, when he looks at us, just see the blood of Jesus. Doesn't he just see not our sins, but Christ's righteousness? In a positional sense, yes. But there's an experiential teaching that runs through the scriptures, and this deals with our experience. And so in our experience, he's only going to see us as holy, blameless, and beyond reproach if we live that way. Hmm. And notice the condition. If indeed you continue in the faith... Well, so that means it's possible to not continue in the faith. And we all know people who've right. failed to continue. And we even have seen this in the parable of the four soils. We did a, a video on that recently. And in Luke 8, uh, verse 13, it talks about those on the rocky soil are those who believe for a time and in time of temptation fall away. Mm-hmm. They don't continue in the faith. 
And notice, grounded and steadfast and are not moved away from the hope of the gospel which you heard. That reminds me of the Galatians that we did a video on. Right. Uh, who were moving away from the gospel. Right. Or another example would be, hold your place here and look at 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 2. I think this is a very powerful verse, and it has the same basic idea. By which you are also saved, if you hold fast that word which I preached to you, unless you believed in vain. Now, this isn't eternal salvation in the sense of being born again or not. No. You don't keep your born againness. No, this is being spiritually healthy, and the word he preached, according to verse 1, is the gospel. Mm -hmm. And according to verses 3 to 11, the gospel is Jesus died, he was buried, he rose, and he appeared to many people, and all of this according to the scriptures. Yeah. And so the point is, we can only live a sanctified life, we can only live a holy, blameless, above reproach life, if we hold fast to the good news of Jesus Christ. That's why when we take communion, hopefully on a weekly basis, but at least regularly, we're remembering Christ's death, burial, resurrection, ascension, and soon return. And so a lot of people have said, we're called to live at the foot of the cross. Yeah. I think we're also called to live at the entrance to the empty tomb. Mm -hmm. Because we live in light of the good news of Jesus Christ, and we know his death, resurrection and ascension tells us he's coming again soon right and we long to hear him say well done good and faithful servant and that's the, what's at stake in colossians 1 21 to 23 if we continue in the faith grounded and steadfast and we're not moved away from the hope of the gospel well then we're going to be presented at the judgment seat of christ before god the father and before all the angels as having been holy blameless and beyond reproach in our Christian lives. Well, I sure, certainly hope that for myself and for you and for everyone watching. Amen. <laughs>